So long before I was a pastor, or a youth pastor, or a church worker, I was a lazy 18-year-old teenager. <laughs> and uh, I was particularly bothered. It was almost like I was a guitar string that was completely tense and wound up. I was completely bothered by the notion that God would make me go and do ministry. I did not want to do anything for God. I was very happy that God had forgiven me. I just, uh, in some years past, accepted the Lord. Uh, but I did not want to do anything for God. And so when I was 18 years old, I had a friend come up and say, hey, do you want to do a mission trip in, uh, in Spain? Uh, the place is called Zaragoza, okay, if anybody wants to know. I've just said it poorly, so apologies to all my Spanish friends. Uh, but anyway, uh, and I said, well, I'll, I'll consider it, which I meant was, no, no, I'm not going to do that. And, um, well, so a year passed. And the next year, someone entirely different, they didn't even know each other, they were in going to different ch churches, someone entirely different said, hey, do you want to go on a mission trip? Well, where is it to? Oh, to Spain. Where? Zaragoza. Oh. <laughs> and something very interesting happened when I was re-invited to the same trip that I had gone before. I thought, hold on. God's doing something here. <laughs> this is an exciting thing for us to realize. That God is actually able to do something in the real world. Like in the world in which we live. God is doing things. And he was actually saying, Tim, come along into what I'm doing and be part of my story. And, and I'll do something great. Come along to what I'm doing. And, and I, I will do something amazing. Trust me, just come along. And so this time I said, yes. I said yes. Now what happened is it cost quite a bit of money to go. It was about 3,500 uh, pounds. And this was about, oh goodness, 20 some odd years ago. <laughs> I am so old. Um, anyway, anyway, I raised about a sixth of it before the due date. So I, 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 there was no way I was gonna go on this trip and the, the Sunday before all the money was due, it was due the next day, I, I still remember, I'm, I'm sitting in church, and the pastor gives his normal old sermon, and at the end he's like, oh, hold on, um, I think uh, one of us is going on a mission trip in here. Uh, who's going on a mission trip again? Oh, it's Tim. Hey, Tim, are you going on a mission trip? And he's like, oh, yeah, come up here, come up here, Tim. Right? And so I came up, and he's like, hey, everyone, where are you going, Tim? And I said, oh, I'm just going here. And he's like, oh, do you need money or something to do that? And I said, well, yeah, actually, I do have to raise a bit, yeah. And then he said, go break, well, give to him, Tim. Okay, now go sit down. And so I sat back down, and then after the service was over, there was a queue, actually, of people who just kind of made a line, and it was all raised. And so God worked powerfully after I stepped out in faith. That's what I think the story is about that we have in front of us here. That's what I think the story is about that we're reading about uh, today, we have Abraham, and he's he's had lots of steps of faith. Here's another one that he's going to have. And then we have this guy, uh, the servant. His name is Eli Etzer, okay, Eli Etzer, which uh, uh, is an interesting name. It means God is my help. And he's going to take a step of faith, and he's going to find out that God is helping and working powerfully as he trusts God. So our big idea this morning is go with God in what he is doing, and he will work powerfully through it. Go with God in what he's doing, and he will work powerfully through it. So let's start by noticing Abraham's step of faith and his testimony. He's going to give a testimony to God here. So Genesis 24, we're in verse 1. Um, and this is on uh, page 23. Abraham was now very old, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to the senior servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, 
the God of heaven, the God of the earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get my wife for, or get a wife for my son Isaac. The serpent asked him, What if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you came from? Make sure you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household of my native land, who spoke to me and promised me an on oath, saying to your offspring, I will give this land, he will send his angel before you, so that you can get a wife for my son from there. So a few things to note here. First, Abraham is still busy doing God's work. He's still busy. He's 140 years old, at least. And he's thinking about God's will, what needs to happen. So God had promised, through your seed, that is through your children, I will bless the whole world. Through your seed. And now he has a seed, a son. His name is Isaac. And so he thinks, you know what? For my son to become a blessing, the blessing that God wants him to be, he needs a wife, a faithful spouse. And so he sits there and he prays about it and he does nothing. He says, I'll just pray for it. No, is that what he does? <laughs> no, he does something, okay? And I, I think we kind of, I love prayer. We need to continue praying. After you're done praying, the best thing to do is take some action. And so he calls Eleazar. God is my help. He calls this guy. And he, he says, I have, a, I have a vim for you. I have a very important mission, <laughs> okay? Uh, I want you to go. To my home country and find a spouse from my people, from my relatives. So are we living like Abraham is? Are we on mission to do God's will? Or do we do our own thing and then on Sunday we hope that God will just kind of give us a boost so that we can continue doing our own thing and going our own way? Be like Abraham. Do God's will. God wants us to be his emissaries, his conduit. God wants to speak his love through you. You're the vessel through which other people get to know about the Lord. Be like Abraham. Take a step of faith. Think about uh, Queen Elizabeth. She has just passed away. And she used to say very openly... I work for God, okay? I work for God, and that's why I'm going to serve you. She didn't say, I'm the queen, I do whatever I want, and you all just bow before me. She said, I work for God, and I'm going to serve him. So be like Abraham, be like the queen. Now look, Abraham, in sharing why the servant needs to go, he's actually kind of sharing his own testimony. And this is great. Um... His unique story of grace. And so you'll notice he starts very interesting. He says there is a God who made heaven and the God who made earth. He's saying there's a God who made everything. That's a radical thought. Not dozens of deities, just a single deity who created everything. And that deity appeared to me and told me to leave my former life and to go into his promise. By faith. That's what Abraham says. I'm, I'm to leave my former life. I'm to repent of that way. And then I'm to go into his promise. Into his promised land. And that there he would save me. He would provide offspring. Well guess what? You have a story just like this too, don't you? <laughs> if you're a believer in Christ, what has happened is that God has come to you. And he says, leave your former life. Leave your sins behind. Leave the wrong you've done and put your hope in me, specifically in the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, to save you and then live for me. Go into the promised land. And so we actually have, we all have a story like Abraham's and some of them are astounding. Now some of you guys have been through so much stuff mm -hmm. for God to reach your heart, but you're not sharing it with you're keeping the big story to yourself. This is part of God's message of love to the world. Share your story. All right, now there's a caveat here. 
Uh, there's an elephant in the room. You see Abraham says, leave, don't marry the Canaanite ladies. Don't marry them. Leave and go to your own, to my own people. Well, what's going on? Is, is Abraham some sort of racist? He's pretty preferential there. And this is kind of important. So God said that he is going to judge all of the Canaanites to Abraham. He said that to Abraham. When Abraham showed up in the land, there were tons of people already in the land, and God said, this is the land I'm giving you. And Abraham looked around and said, well, what about all these people? And God said, they're going to go. That's what he said. They're going to go. And we really need to hear this, actually. God really judges whole nations. Look at your history books, and you'll notice that groups of people move around, they lose their places, they fade from the scene. Do you know who did that? God did. And God will do the same with any nation that turns its back mm -hmm. on him. So be warned. What did the Canaanites do that's so bad? If you really want to know, read Leviticus chapter 18. That's a start. It's too humiliating and shameful to read. I'll just say that one of the things that they were really into is sacrificing their own children to their nasty gods. God removes whole groups of people for not looking at him, not turning to him, and we need to deal with that. So now, if Isaac marries a Canaanite woman, he becomes a Canaanite. Okay, that's what happens. And then he joins with what God is going to judge. So that's what's going on here. Uh, now, let's take a look at the theme verse of our section. It's verse 7. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household, in my native land, who spoke to me and promised me on oath, saying, To your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, so that you can get a wife. So Abraham is stepping out in faith, but he is certainly not alone. Okay, he is certainly not alone. God will go before him. God will go before Eliezer. God will go before uh, Abraham and make the, 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 the mission successful. Uh, on that mission trip, actually, that I went on, uh, at the end of it, we went for a week-long hike uh, on a trail called the Camino de Santiago, which is really great. And right before we got on the hike, actually, the director of the mission trip pulled up in his vehicle, and he, we all gathered around. He said, you guys are about to go on the Camino de Santiago. Uh, I've just been down, and I've seen every place that you're going to stop, and I've seen all the places where you're going to get water, and all the places where you're going to get food. I've just checked on everything and made sure it's all clear, and it's all clear, and it's all going to be good, and so now I'm sending you knowing that you're going uh, in safety, okay? I'm sending you knowing that you're going in safety. That's what God does. God is going with us. Mm -hmm. God has not abandoned us. Mm -hmm. He has done I was thinking about this um, many times in sermons. I do a sermon, you know? And uh, after the sermon is over, someone will come up and say, you know, um, it's almost like a confessional. I really enjoyed your talk today. I said, oh, that's nice. And then they say, so last night I was thinking about, and then they say whatever it is we talked about today. <laughs> you know, like last night I read the very passage we're reading today and it really bothered me. And I'm really glad that we talked about it. Or, or last night I had a dream and in the dream it, it kind of, it relates to what you said. This happens all the time. God goes before me. He's doing the work. He's working behind the scenes. When we act in faith, we never walk alone. Even if we don't like that football team. All right, uh, timeline. <laughs> Go with God and what he is doing, and he will work powerfully through it. Adam takes that step of faith, and now it's like God himself is his helper. Let's look at verse 12 now. I'm sorry, Abraham took that step of faith there. Verse 12. Then he prayed, Lord God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring. And the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, please let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, drink. 
and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. The woman was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever slept with her. She went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up again. The servant hurried to meet her. So Eliezer is going to set a test of faith. It's very interesting. He travels more than a thousand miles to get to this land. It's not entirely clear that he knows what city to go to. Naharim, uh, Aram Naharim is actually this very large five or four hundred mile long square. And it looks like he just goes to the first city that appears, okay? So there he goes to the first city that appears, but he doesn't go in. He doesn't say, hey, you guys know a, a, a guy named Nahor? He doesn't say that. He just kind of goes outside to the, to the well and he says, okay, God, here's how it's going to work. If this is true, if any of this is real, if you're a God who does what he says he's going to do, then I would like a woman to come out and I'm going to say, give me a drink. And she's going to give me a drink and then she's going to say, I'll water your camels. We'll come back to this. This is a big ask, actually. Um, and, and that's how I'll know that this is the right woman. And so what he's doing is he's actually he's putting a test out there. Do you actually care? Are you actually working? Is anything at all happening when I pray to you, God? Are you? Now, notice, actually, he said, my master's God. He didn't say my God. He said, my master's God. So yeah, I don't know that he believes, actually. See, he's like heard Abraham's speech now, and he's like, okay, God, if you're real, then let's see you really do something, huh? I'm just going to stay out here, and we'll see if this works out. And guess what? God delivers exactly as it happens. Actually, before he finishes, God has already had the preparation. And out comes this young lady. She's the right person. She says the right things at the right time. She's got the right lineage. It's all, it all fits perfectly. You know, that's actually a lot of detail to get that to all work together. Right? Thousand mile journey. Woman. Got to be the right city. Got to be the right, you know, what, what, did, did, how did God get her to get up at that particular moment and say those things? God is able. He is always working behind the scenes for his people. Now, a few days ago, when the queen passed away, before they announced that she had died, but after she had died, there was a beautiful double rainbow that appeared over Buckingham Palace, okay? Now listen, I've been in this country for seven years and I've seen one rainbow, okay? <laughs> I've seen one that wasn't a double. Is that an accident? No. That is no accident. God is working in profound ways. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, this is the next, this is a, a much more rudimentary illustration. Sometimes I have conversations with people about why God exists, or we're just talking about Jesus, and I tend to say stupid things that are going to mess the whole conversation up. But this is what happens. You know, I, I, instead of putting the focus on Jesus and upon his love, I'm going to take it somewhere else, I'm going to waste time. And so here I am, and I'm about to say something stupid, and more often than not, something just interrupts me. I don't get a chance to say the dumb thing I'm going to say. God, God pulls and says, no, kid, no, no. <laughs> keep going this way. God is working. God is always working. God is working in your life in the most minute way. So precise, you can't even imagine the amount of mathematics it involves. He does it all. You can trust in Him. God has a purpose for your life, and He will work it out when you walk in faith. Let's have two little points on uh, Rebecca, and then we'll come back to this theme here. First, uh, just notice this test that um, Eliezer comes up with is about kindness. It's about love. Who will be kind enough to say, have a drink? Okay, that's the same sort of thing that we uh, experience when we walk by a homeless person and they say, can I have some food? So which one of us actually says, yeah, let me go get some food, yeah? Or which one of us says, you're, you're a drug addict, I know, and I'm not giving you anything. Okay, that used to be me, right? Rebecca says, yes, yes, I'll give you a drink. And then the second thing is to, to, 
to think I'll also water your camels. This is like a 30 minute procedure here. This is, there are 12 camels filling all that water. She's going back and forth with all this. This is a lot of work. No one, you could imagine him standing out here just waiting for someone to do this for days and days and days and days and nobody does it. And it actually it points to the fact that she is loving. Now, if you serve a God of love, you need to be loving. <laughs> and Abraham is loving. And Abraham is kind. And this woman who is now going to help Isaac, she is loving. She is kind. She is going to live in a worthy way. And so that's, that's you know, someone needs to tell the people who put together a tender that they need to change their algorithm. It's not, it, it's love, okay? <laughs> Find the person that's loving. That's the one you want. Uh, second thing to point out. It says here that she's a virgin. It's crazy how society has just mocked this to bits. Just mocked it to bits. Oh, the Bible. There it goes again, telling us that we should only get married to one person and stay married. And shouldn't just go have fun. How terrible of the Bible. Listen, this is a good thing. It is a good thing to find just one person and to do life with that one person and to not go and seek out many, many partners. I've seen loads of people who have just slept with anybody who was willing. And you know what happens? It really wrecks them. Okay, I'm just going to be honest. It wrecks them. But doing this sort of thing, practicing faithfulness, that's worth praise. That's worth praise. Uh, let's take a look at Eliezer's response now. Uh, Verse 26. Again, amazing words. Then the man bowed down and worshipped the Lord, saying, Praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abram, who has not abandoned his loving kindness and faithfulness to my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on a journey to the house of my master's relative. It was really a bit of a needle in the haystack sort of moment for Eleazar. It's like, how am I going to find this person? And God led him right to the place where he could. And what Eliezer says here, when he says, God has not abandoned his loving kindness and his faithfulness, is he's saying God has kept his promise because he loves us. That's what he's saying. God has kept his promise because he loved us. He loves us. Notice uh, two things that happen here. The first thing is that Eliezer becomes a believer. Because he is now bowing down before the living God. So he's made a decision that this God is real. And I'm going to follow him. And this is probably, his, his name probably changes to Eliezer at this point. And, uh, I trust in that God. He is my help. But then, I just want you guys to know, this statement that is made is actually a good statement for the whole Bible. It's the message of the Bible. Man has really made a mess of things. We fell in the garden, but God loves us. Mm -hmm. God will not abandon his love for us. He will not abandon us. He will abandon his son. Mm -hmm. But not his people. Mm -hmm. He abandoned Jesus. So that he would never have to say goodbye to you. God's love is what will give us confidence in taking that step of faith. If we go with God, we know he'll never turn his back on us. Why? Because he is good and faithful, and he is working out his will, and his will is to love you. God always keeps his promise, and so we can always act in faith. Go with God in what he is doing, and, it, and he will work powerfully. A couple of ways we can integrate this into our lives. Uh, number one, let's be doers of God's work. The decision that we make in our hearts that says, I do not live for me, I live to do the will of God. Can you be like the queen? Because that's what she said. I'm going to serve these people. Can you do that too? I will serve God. I will fear him and I will live my life, not for myself, but to do his will. We need people to do that. This country will not be okay if everybody lives for themselves. 
But if we will choose to live for God and to love His people, that will make a difference. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Second thing to think about. Let's be hopeful and encouraged and happy because God is going to keep His promise. And, and, and so as we do the things that God has asked us to do, we're doing so in a culture that says what you believe is ridiculous. But we don't have to be afraid. Because God is with us. In fact, not only should we not be afraid, we should be confident. Confident. God loves me. He will not uh, abandon me. He will take me to be with him forever. And, and so I can live before. I can live before him with joy. So we do those things. Will you be one who does God's work in faith? Will you be one who does so in courage and in strength? Knowing that God loves you more than you can imagine. And will work all things for his good. He goes before us. Let's pray.